Mickey Feltman comedy machine, starring... Oh, good Lord, they'll get anyone their own series these days. Orson Welles. My, he's grown up now, hasn't he? Ossie Beeser. Well, that'll be groovy, I expect. And Spike Milligan. I do hope my set can take him. How the level of TV has dropped lately. And now, in the field of medicine for special research, particularly in the field of mixed potions. And the winner is... Dr. Henry Jekyll. <laughs> Accepting the award for Dr. Jekyll will be Mr. Hyde.
I am autocratic. And I want to talk to you about an exciting new film I've just produced. Now, I've made hundreds of great movies, but I honestly believe that this one is worth seeing. I'd like you to take a brief look at some of the outstanding scenes. Would you run the trailer, please? From the bestseller on the shelf of every household, a book known and shared by millions, comes a film they said could never be made, would never be made, should never be made. Autocratic proudly presents the dictionary. Yes, the dictionary. Now at last you can see Ardvark, Alamode, Autonomy, Abacus, Axiomatic, and that's just the beginning of the dictionary. You won't want to miss the confrontation between agriculture and anthropomorphic. See, some words grow from puberty to adultery. See, a diabolical phonetic scheme. See, the passionate moment when two verbs are conjugated. I made this movie because the dictionary says it all. It tells it like it is. We shot the whole of it on location. We filmed decadence and depravity in Rome, where it actually happened. It wasn't an easy film to make. I ran into a few problems in the States where they wouldn't let us shoot liberty and lechery. So we went to Mexico, where we also filmed Artichoke and Phillips Screw. I didn't want to pull any punches with this film. It has everything. Sex, nudity, lust, lettuce, linoleum. <laughs> and tonsillectomy. The dictionary, a monumental achievement in filmmaking, the film that's never at a loss for words. Hear Frankie Lane sing the love theme from the dictionary. Dictionary, ho, ha, ha, ride along. Clippity-clop, clippity-clop, and hold on the home. Dictionary, ho, ha. The dictionary filled with candid, unabashed dialogue. No. Need. <gasps> Negative. Nice. <gasps> Naughty. Nonsense. Necessary. Nerve. Neurosis. Nothing. Now. <gasps> Never. Next. <laughs> yes, the dictionary. You can't afford to miss it. With an all-star cast. Burt Lancaster as xenophobia. Bridget Bardot as Escargot. Kirk Douglas in the dual role of Spartacus and Asparagus. Greta Garbo making a screen comeback as Utensil. And Marcel Marceau as all the silent letters. No one will be admitted during the last ten minutes of Zebra, Zeus and Zither. This picture rated X. Y. And Z. And lovely the girl from Ipanema goes a walking, and when she passes each one, she passes goes. <laughs> when she walks, she's like a samba that swings so cool and sways so gentle that when she passes each one, she passes goes. <laughs> But I watch her so sadly. How? 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 How can I tell her I love her? How? How can I tell her I love her? Yes, yes, I would give my heart gladly. Oh, but each day when she walks to the sea, she looks straight ahead, not at me. Tall and tan and young and lovely, the girl from Ipa, Nima goes to dance. When she passes each one, they'll go. It was a, it was a guy in drag. 
and it was in the wrong key. Or announcement comes to you immediately following that which has just preceded it, but not necessarily in that order. This has been a recorded announcement. I am a recorded announcer. You are a recorded audience. 
Let's face it, we're all in this bloody thing together. This is New York City, a frightened city, a city plagued by corruption, by pollution, and by an ever increasing. <laughs> <laughs> around the town. Great, just great. Uh, do you know Chicago?
Good evening. Here, we have a skull, which is a remnant of the very earliest remains of Neolithic man. <laughs> Just add a few chopped vegetables, and you'll have a lovely Neolithic stew. Next week, Brontosaurus in a basket. <laughs> yes, here's Holocaust with that terrific guy and real human being, that merry master of mayhem, sincerely yours. The uh, Doomsday Machine means that once again it's time for me, Robbie Greenhouse, to welcome you to another destruction-packed edition of Holocaust. <laughs> that's wonderful. Well, that's just a glimpse of some of the treats and goodies we've got in store for you on Holocaust, the game in which you, our viewer, could win the chance to work off your own aggressions, pay off old debts, wreak terrible revenges, or if you win our star prize, actually blow up the home of a person of your own choice. <laughs> That's wonderful. You're a very wonderful audience. Well, this week's bumper banger is a chance to drop personally a 10-ton bomb under the very famous Taj Mahal in India. <laughs> the rules are so simple that even an idiot could follow them, but I'll just explain them for the benefit of our viewers. Uh, each contestant has to answer a number of simple questions and carry out a number of simple tests. The number of marks he gets are recorded in tons of TNT on the doomsday machine over there. Thank you, Sandra. <laughs> now, the number of marks he gets determines the amount of prizes he will win. So, ladies and gentlemen, everybody's a winner on Holocaust. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but watch out, because we've got a number of booby prizes tucked in. <laughs> Uh, we start right away with our first contestant, who is our returnee from last week. Ladies and gentlemen, a big hand for Goat Throbber from London, Mr. Silas Ribble. Thank you, Sandra. Thank you, Sandra. Thank you. Now, Silas, how are you? Welcome to have you on the Thank show. You. It's marvelous to have you here. That's no, super great. Now, you were just about to start your last test. The camera's over there, Silas. Over there. Yeah, he's... You were about to start your last test when the time bomb exploded to bring our show to a halt. That is correct, Robbie. Yes. Yeah. Now, have you decided what you're going to do? Yes, I have, Robbie. Remember that your score stands at 657 pounds of TNT. Yes. Uh, what are you going to do then? I have decided yes. to drop the chair on my boss's head. You're going to smash a chair. Smash on, it, you're yes. going to smash a chair on your boss's yes. head. Isn't that great, ladies and gentlemen? Yes. Thank you. Right, that's great, Silas. So uh, he's going for the big one, ladies and gentlemen. So let's meet Silas's boss. But uh, before we do, Silas, hey. do you really hate him? <laughs> With every fibre of my being. Oh, isn't that wonderful, ladies and gentlemen? What a marvellous character. So, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, let's meet Silas's boss, Sir Arnold Fitzmaurice. Okay. Bless you, bless you. Bless you very sincerely, Sir Arnold. Now, uh, that's wonderful, isn't it? Now, Sir Arnold, if you'd just like to uh, stand on this spot over here. <laughs> Welcome to the condemned cell. <laughs> Yes, OK. Now you have 30 seconds in which to smash this chair. Thank you, Sandra. Would you just give it to Silas? Thank you. Thank you. You have 30 seconds to smash this chair over your boss's head. 30 seconds from now. Do <laughs> 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 Silas. <laughs> Isn't that great? A grand effort, a grand effort. You haven't quite knocked him out, but you've certainly got him in trouble. <laughs> OK, now, Sir Arnold, bless you. Uh, did that hurt you? Not much, a bit, considerably, a lot, or very much indeed? That hurt uh, very much indeed. <laughs> very much indeed. Well done, Silas. <laughs> and you have won. You have won. If you'll just come over here, Silas. You have won the opportunity to fling this hand grenade. Thank you, Sandra. You have won the opportunity to fling this hand grenade into the front room of your bank manager. Isn't <laughs> marvelous? <laughs> Thank you, and good luck, Silas. Thank you, Robbie. Uh, now, can we have our next contestant, please? And from Warrington in Cheshire, it's professional goat robber, Tommy Gormley. <laughs> 
the show. Uh, now, tell me... Um, Hello, lads. Some of the lads from the club. Nice 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 Would you like to wave to them? That's great. Hello, now, tell me, tell me, how old are you? That's fantastic. Oh. That really is. Are you married? Oh, no, really? No children. That's fantastic, Tommy. What a sport, ladies and gentlemen. Isn't it a sport? I mean that very warmly and sincerely. Bless you, Tommy. Oh, you. And now, Tommy, you've got the chance to unleash 30 seconds of verbal venom. Uh, if you would just choose the picture of your favorite murderer from this rogues gallery over here. Oh. Thank you, Sandra. Now, just choose your favorite murderer, and on the back is the topic we want you to abuse for oh. 30 seconds. Now, who's it going to be? Jack the Ripper? Well, I'll uh, Frankenstein? Uh, I'll have Jack the Ripper. You want Jack the Ripper? Would you like no, oh, I'll have that one. Good for you. He's going to take Adolf Hitler. Isn't that marvellous, ladies and gentlemen? Isn't that wonderful? OK, Tommy. Uh-oh. And, Tommy, the verbal venom question is, we'd like you to yell vicious and violent invective at long-haired students. <laughs> <laughs> OK, Tommy. Well. You'll have 30 seconds from now to yell violent invective at long-haired students. OK, Tommy. From no. now. No. No. Um. Oh, oh. like, um... Oh, Don't come on, come on. Lad. Don't I think long-haired students are silly. Uh, well, uh, <laughs> uh, sorry, Tommy, that isn't very violent. Uh, Doomsday oh. Machine, uh, how many points do we get for that answer? Uh, I'm afraid, Tommy, you only get uh, three points for correct grammar out of a possible 500. So, with your score, thank you, Sandra, with your score out of three out of a possible 700, it's time for your final test. And do you want to go out with a bang or with a whimper? What will I say? What, 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 what are you going to do, Tommy? What are you going to do? No, no, I, well, I'll go out with a whimper. He's going to go out with a whimper. Good sport, ladies and gentlemen, oh. it's a good sport. OK, Tommy, bring on the whimper, Sandra. There we are, Tommy. Yeah. Now, you see, all you have to do, Tommy, for your 100 tons of TNT, thank you, Sandra, all you have to do is to fight that dummy. Uh, but if the dummy beats you, no points at all, and we kidnap your grandmother and break your leg. <laughs> <laughs> Only kidding, Tommy, oh. but seriously. OK, Tommy, you have 30 seconds to fight that dummy from now. Oh. Go on, Tommy. We have a little encouragement, audience. Go on, go on. 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 Go that's really wonderful. Isn't that wonderful? Can I, uh, applause for Tommy Gordon. <laughs> Marvellous. I cut my finger. Oh, that's amazing because the sword is completely blunt. <laughs> <laughs> never mind, that's ten points, Tommy, for getting the dummy to the ground. <laughs> so you've scored 13 points off TNT, Tommy. Oh. Unlucky for some, they say. <laughs> <laughs> but let's see what you've won. Uh-huh. Can I have the uh, card, please? Thank you, Sandra. Tommy, you have won this week's major booby prize, oh. an execution by a firing squad. Thank you very much, sir. They've all donated their services free. Don't you oh. think that's really wonderful, Lord? It's a big hand for the firing squad. Thank you. And thank you, and thank you, Tommy Gormley, a grand loser. Thank Goodbye, you very Robbie. much. Oh, before you go, a little consolation prize. A blindfold. Oh. Thank you, Sergeant. Put it on. Oh. <laughs> and here's a cigarette, Tommy, but uh, don't smoke it now because it's bad for your health. <laughs> in Cheshire. Thank you. A grand loser. And uh, now, ladies and gentlemen, there is another prize for the plucky widow. There will be a one-pound gift voucher, redeemable at the morticians of her choice, or if she's the sentimental type, at the taxidermist. There, there he goes. A grand loser. Thank you, Tommy. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm afraid that's all we have time for this week, but as we sign off, We've got some wonderful film of last week's lucky bumper banger winner demolishing the very famous Eiffel Tower in Paris, France. Oh la la. So. Well, there it is. Good night. Bless you all, most sincerely. Watch how you drive. Drive carefully. Bless you all. Bless you. Good night. Bless you. Very sincerely. Very, very sincerely. Good night.
I think this is one of the reasons why the firm is on an upward swing. If you recall, two years ago when I first began this speech, I mentioned that we of the Bedlow Pharmaceutical Company will always be one big happy family. <coughs> this is a company built on warmth and friendship. I am not your chairman. I'm your father. Yeah. I've always advocated an open door policy. Any man can come to me with his problems, no matter how small. Now, even though we've had a record-breaking profit this year, I am more concerned with the employees because people mean more to me than dollars. Dollars are just pieces of paper. But people are made up of flesh and blood. But what about our health benefits? The allotment of the special fund was increased 7% in the last three years because a special fund has been set aside for our wonderful, delightful, warm, aging employees. I care for you. cease pursuing shorter working hours and an increase in all manner of benefits. So in conclusion, it's not so difficult to see that as you look around you, we are truly, as I said in the beginning, one big happy family. Thank you and good night. <clears throat> I must be coming down with something. Vodka crust. Vodka crust, sir. One cube of ice. One ice, sir. Three drops of lemon. Three of lemon, sir. And the juice of quarter of a lime. Quarter of a lime, sir. Stir. Not shake stir, sir. One vodka crusta, stirred, not shaken. You come here often, baby. <laughs> Tonight I want to appeal to you on behalf of the Natural Preservation Society, a group dedicated to the protection of each of the species that in Habit this planet. <laughs> now here, the Bengal tiger, one of nature's finest creatures, in danger of extinction. The Javanese rhino, a unique relic of man's caveman past, but destined, unless we can help, to become as rare as hen's teeth. <laughs> and tonight I want to talk to you about a species that might disappear before even the tiger and the rhino, before we even realize there is a problem. The British aristocrat. <laughs> now, the film we're going to show you tonight, I hope, is going to persuade you that we're in danger of losing a species that deserves better than becoming a mere moth-eaten head on a wall. The British aristocrat at one time, there were thousands, but alas, due to excessive inbreeding and the loss of their mainstay, Servants are now down to a handful. We took our camera team to a nobility sanctuary, Spongling Manor, home of Lord Plumdick. A happy haven for aristocrats, all relations of Lord Plumdick. But sadly, he himself is unmarried and without male issue. This is part of our mission. We're in luck. Almost at once, we see something move in front of us. A flash of aristocratic purple from under the trees. A hint of ermine. And the jewel coronet reveals that this is the head of the family himself, Lord Plumdick. The sight of our camera car has frightened him away. It was to be several hours before we were finally rewarded. 
moldering butler to nobility for many years, and now our guide spotted a pride of peers at play. Notice the innocence of their traditional frolics. Moldering suggested that we now try the first of our decoys. He had prepared afternoon tea. And here we see him attempting to lure the aristocrats. Our hearts were in our mouths as they emerged from hiding. They'd obviously got wind of the bait. Their capes fluttered with excitement at the scent of cucumber sandwich. And we're in luck. Lord Plumdick, Lady Anne, his sister, and her son, Peregrine, have taken the bait. They have come for tea. With the aid of our hidden camera, we were able to take some unique shots of our aristocrats eating. The strange noises you can hear are the voices of the aristocrats as they actually talk to each other in a language as old as ostentation itself. Our camera crew moved a little nearer. It was at this moment that some strange primeval instinct told Lord Plumdick of our presence, that his territory was being threatened. <laughs> Again, we fail. We must find something that does not arouse his suspicions. Something that he will really trust. As Moldering assures us that aristocrats will only trust horses and dogs, we decided to put a bold new plan into operation. We put a camera inside a horse. It worked. At last, we were able to take some real close-up shots. Our horse seemed to win his lordship's confidence. And here we see him feeding our cameraman lumps of sugar. Apparently, they tasted of mothballs. And now Moldering suggests that his lordship should mount the beast. The ancient aristocratic instinct asserts itself. The horse's back is broken. An aristocrat does what an aristocrat has to do. We had learned that it was essential to win the confidence of Lord Plumdick and his family. American aristologists had found the English aristocrat is invariably attracted by the dollar bill. This proved a sure way to bring our noble prey right up to the camera car. confidence, we were ready for our prime objective, mating. Lord Plumdick must have an heir. There is no suitable mate in England. So we flew over a Russian countess. The authorities in Europe who kindly came to our assistance assured us that her credentials were fully authenticated. To our surprise and disappointment, Lord Plumdick at first showed little interest in the great lady, but the resourceful moldering tempted him with genuine 18 karat Romanov jewelry. The ice was broken.
Moldering assures us that all is going well, that the aristocratic mating ritual is well underway. And so we prepare to leave. Or it will be several months before we can be sure that our mission has been successfully accomplished. We returned nine months later. Success! A new aristocrat is born. Lord Plumdick proudly announces the birth of his heir and his faithful workers. The Duke is dead. Long live the Duke. Now, to keep this race alive, the natural preservation of Aristocrats Fund needs your money. Without this money, Lord Plumdick and many like him will simply disappear. The choice is yours. Good night. Well, that's about it for this week. See you again next week. I'd like to thank everybody on the show, but above all, I'd like to thank you for inviting me into your living room. I never invited him in, did you? I thought he was with you. I don't know anybody who dresses like that. Well, <laughs> goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Oh, what the boy?